I've been thinking for a while how best to talk about the last two tests of paragraph 79e significantly enhance the immediate setting and sensitive to the defining characteristics of the local area. And um, a lot to cover in that, so I thought perhaps the best way of explaining it is through a project. And given I can't go very far, what better project to explain it on than my own house? So um, there's four different ways of approaching the site where our house is, and each one of them has quite unique things that have to respond to. Here we're approaching from as if you're coming from Staplehurst, so you're coming from the northeast, and obviously we can see a house on the left our neighbour. There's another house over on the right and um, our house and our site kind of represents the other corner of a T-junction. Like the other two houses, um, certainly when we moved here, had larger trees. These guys have felled some trees since and so have these guys. But there was lots of trees. But our site was very open so one of the things we've been doing is trying to build some structure back into our, our corner to consolidate the whole of the T-junction. As you see, looking at the house, the way it kind of appears just behind those trees, um, it's obviously interesting. You don't get to see all of it. You get to see some of it. It's a little bit of a reveal. It's obviously different to the houses either side of it. But all of the materials are grown or made very locally indeed. So it is sensitive to the defining characteristics of the local area in in its materiality. Um, the built form, the shape, um, was uh, was an interesting one because um, we, the way I think of the house is we've peeled the land up, slid our building underneath and we look out of the landscape. But in this landscape you do see lots of very different building forms agricultural building forms and some of them aren't entirely dissimilar <laughs> in form to what we have here. It's a, it's a form that you might associate with being yeah, certainly not residential but um, it's a form that you uh, um, you do recognise as being part of the fabric of the countryside. The second way you can approach the site where our house is, is from the east and coming across a footpath across the fields. You can just see to the left of the house with a white base over there. You can see the side of our house. There's no windows pointing in this direction because we don't want to spoil the, the darkness at night and uh, the house is looking at something else. It's not about a direct view from here. You can see how the the top of the arch is still nestled below the tree line from here and as you start walking closer to it you obviously start to reveal more of the, the south open elevation. Again the materials on the house because they're made and grown locally they, they fit in and blend in with the, the visual material landscape. So whilst the building form might be unusual um, in terms of the way other buildings look, um, it sits well, it, it commands its position, it's not shying away, it's not apologetic, it's not seeking to be apologetic, um, and, uh, but what it's doing is responding to each of its views with a different response because each way you can approach the site requires something different. And coming up to the house from the south, um, you can actually see that, we barely, you might not see it on this camera, but behind this little oak tree in front, which was much smaller 10 years ago, um, the house is nestled in amongst the tree line behind there. And just as we get past this tree, it starts to reveal itself. But um, basically, as you're going along the road from the south, the road is, the road is turning, your viewpoint is shifting and changing. So here, as the road is turning around towards the right, when you look off to the left, you just see, hopefully, 
um, you can just see the top of the arch just poking over the top of the trees, which are the um, suck, uh, the bullis uh, suckers rootstock that came off original fruit trees that are on our site. And you can see it's still nestled, the, the, tr the land rises up towards the north and there's a distant tree line there. And the house is just a little accent of an arch popping over the top, which I think is rather charming. I like to call this approach my driveway. <laughs> Um, again, it just you can see across the landscape, you can see an oast house and a farmhouse over there. You can see the top of an oast in the distance over there. And further west, you can see a couple of houses nestled in there. There's a couple of new houses replacing an old pub further up towards the west. But when they, um, when they say buildings can and often do enhance the landscape within which they are set, I like to think that the way our house responds to this view from the south is a very appropriate response to that truth and um, being sensitive to the defining character of the local area doesn't mean copying things that were done in the past but um, it does mean doing something that significantly enhances the setting. So when you approach the house from the north don't see very much. It just pokes its top above the hedge. North elevation. I'll just take the stick up. The north elevation's kept pretty solid because we don't want to lose heat in the winter and um, the north elevation isn't exposed to the sun so we can't get passive solar gains so and also we don't want to have lots of light spilling out at night as we move further west you can see that all the trees we've been planting over the last 10 or 12 years are starting to grow and hide conceal the house but as we head west we start moving uphill and um, what we always wanted to do was have the house seen behind a veil of trees and see it much more knitted into its setting because it was very exposed before. But the west elevation of the house is very solid and um, we wanted it to be solid so that we didn't let out lots of light um, emittance to, and spoil the nighttime view when you're coming down from the west. But equally, we didn't want headlights shining in the house. So, yeah, you can see the house at the moment, it's still behind the trees. But um, we thought that in having a solid elevation, it needed to be broken down into different layers and different levels to break the massing up. Um, so that's what we did with the form. Uh, but we also wanted part of that to be living, part of that elevation to be living. Um, so the best uh, way of getting that living part to work was to have... Um, I wanted the stuff in the roadside verges to look kind of look like what the roof should be. So at this time of year when everything's lush on the side of the road, I wanted the top of the house to have that same sort of, of effect. So um, at this time of year, everything starts to get quite tall and woolly and you end up with lots of oxide daisies up on the roof at the end of May. The patina of the roof tiles is starting to take on the pattern that, that Kent peg tiles take after a few years. Um, you can see that the distant in the distance beyond the house there's a tree, a couple of large trees and, and the house is just nestled within that tree canopy. As we move up further away to the west we start rising up and what the house, the house sort of starts to settle down and the distant tree line and the skyline of uh, Staplehurst starts to become more apparent. And you just see that our house is nestled into that long distance view. 
So this, this approach from the west had a lot to do with why the house is the shape it is. And I'm um, not sure how much you can see in this view. But you can see, now you can see the distant skyline of Staplehurst. I've taken this recording in the afternoon so that the sun's shining on this side. Because when I did it in the morning, obviously this side is in shadow, so it's really difficult to see. So hopefully you can just see everything nestled in amongst the tree line. Um, as you go further west, you start to rise up more. But it's, it's from the west that you can actually see the house for the most amount of time. And al although the road is generally much quieter since we've had the Covid lockdown, this is the busiest of the roads and we are at kind of end of working day now. Uh, what are we? Half past five. Um, so yeah, this sort of time you would get more traffic coming through here, which is also helpful as to why the north elevation is solid. It uh, reduces the amount of uh, noise we get inside the house. So hopefully you found that useful. Um, it's not something I've, I've really done before, explain the genesis of how our house is the shape it is and how it got to be that shape. Um, it's something I've talked to architecture students in lecture theatres and engineering students in lecture theatres many times over, over the years, but uh, yeah, I've never actually put it together. So uh, it's a bit of a crude video. I'm not a filmmaker, um, but hopefully it was helpful to kind of understand a little bit more about how um, our building form is, um, of our house particularly, has been sensitive to the defining characteristics of the area and how our process of understanding very specifically what um, a, a site's location um, has to contribute to a wider landscape setting and how putting something into that landscape setting needs careful thought. So um, I'm hoping to do a similar sort of video on a few other case studies um, that give some other um, layers of context to the principle of responding to the defining character of an area. But um, uh, as it's taken a little while to put this one together, um, it's going to take probably a while to pull other ones together, but bear with me. Um, hopefully it was helpful. Um, if you'd like to subscribe to our channel, please do click. Uh, I think something should appear about here somewhere. Uh, please do that. And uh, if you want to watch some of the other videos I'm putting together on paragraph 79, countryside policy, some of the tests in paragraph 79 and uh, design in general, um, click and, uh, and hopefully... Uh, you'll find them useful. Stay safe, stay uh, away from people, <laughs> social distancing, and uh, see you soon. Thanks ever so much. Cheers, take care, bye.